All right. Hello, hippos. Everybody else out there. I've got an interesting video for you guys today, uh, bringing you some different value instead of just the daily update. Uh, price is basically moving sideways right now, waiting for that complex structure to basically finish off. So I thought, hey, how about if I did a little bit more education, provided some uh, some different value to you guys. Now, this is different than Elliott Wave 2. It goes outside that. Uh, it was some information I came across in regards to breakout uh, pattern trading and some actual calculations and equations that you can use to predict the targets in regards to pattern breakouts. So I wanted to provide you a PDF format of all of the equations, show you how to read it, and then walk you through some examples as well as to how to properly use the equations and just see how accurate they are as well. Let's dive in. All right, so this is our breakout calculations sheet here. And uh, I take no credit for this. It's something I came across here. Um, and I, uh, I turned it into a PDF format so that I could share it with you guys. Uh, so with that being said, uh, this basically is the definitions of what all these letters mean. And we're gonna take these letters and we're gonna basically plug them into the uh, equations here. This is the measure rule, so to speak. Uh, so with that being said, I wanna talk to you about how this equation actually works. And uh, and take an example, let's just go with uh, broadening bottoms here. And the B would be the breakout price, which is where the price pierces the trend line. Okay, so it's, it's pretty precise about what it, where it wants you to pick it from. The H stands for uh, H, price of the highest peak in the chart pattern. And then L is price of the lowest valley in the chart pattern, okay? So, and then the percent here, this is not actually what you multiply. You don't multiply the equation by this, even though it looks like that. Now, the percent is actually just how often this target gets hit uh, by a percentage. So how often does this actually get hit when it breaks out to the downside or breaks up to the upside, uh, et cetera? So with that being said, let's go walk through some examples of this. What I've done is I've uh, already gone in and I've looked at the patterns, save you guys time, save me time as well. So we're not sitting here filtering through trying to find patterns and then going back and forth in between the sets on what the equation is and so forth. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and we're going to go from right to left, work our way backwards in regards to some patterns that I've found. And I'm focused, I'm an Elliott Wave trader, so patterns are not by any means my strong suit. So if I'm drawing any of them incorrectly, then by all means, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Uh, you don't always have to agree with these, but I am going to show you at least how the equations are done and just where exactly that puts us for targets as well. So the first one here is taking a look at a potential inverse head and shoulders. I know several people were looking at this uh, when it was filling out. And overall, the equation for it is the breakout plus the neckline minus the headline. Okay, so here's our headline at 64.45. Here's our neckline at 76.94. What's important to take away from this here is that you need to go vertically up. Okay, don't go diagonal or anything like that. Go vertically up from the head. To the neckline okay so that's where i'm grabbing my prices from here and we're going to take the difference between that and we're going to add it to the breakout here at 75.62 you can see this math if you follow along with me so breakout 75.62 plus the neckline 76.94 minus the headline 64.45 we're going to get 75.62 plus 12.49 puts us at 88.11 so right now we've currently hit 84.45 so According to this equation, it tells us that we should hit up another four or $500 at least in order to hit this target here. So let's see if that pans out. We'll kind of put it to the test here. All right. So the next one here is a descending wedge. All right. The equation for that is that the breakout minus the highest point in the, ch in the chart minus the lowest point. So here's our highest point all the way up here at 10,282. We've got the lowest point sitting at 8,424 prior to the breakout, okay? Lowest valley in this chart would be here before it breaks out, okay? So we take that and uh, this happens, we hit this target 30% of the time. Most of the time, descending wedges don't break to the downside. So FYI, it's probably why this is such a low percentage here, but 10,282 minus 8424 is 1858 difference. So we're gonna take 8357, the breakout point, subtract 1858 and we get 6499. It literally missed that target by $15. So pretty beautiful overall right there. That's not too shabby. And honestly, maybe had I pulled, you know, these numbers just $15 different, it would have pegged it right on. So 
moving left again, uh, we're going to take a look here at uh, the a bull flag and a triangle. Uh, are two different uh, breakout patterns. I want to show you how you calculate them differently here. So I didn't need the equation for this one. It's real simple, guys. And most of you probably already know this, but there are several patterns on there that I know that you guys probably don't know. I don't know half of them. So, you know, definitely uh, work through it. And if it's something that interests you, you can probably pair it up pretty decently with a chart pattern book as well. So for a triangle, it's different than a bull flag. And keep that in mind. Bull flags are going to be channels that are created from a flag pole, whereas triangles are contracting in price. Uh, so with that being said, this is a triangle. Notice that price is contracting. Yes, I'm ignoring this wick right here. So 10,463 and 9742. We're going to take that difference right here, which is easily done by just grabbing a line like that and then moving it down. Okay, so the one thing that you want to be careful about with the line, because that is a super simple way of doing it, the math is a better way of doing it. The reason that the math is a better way of doing it is dependent upon being in linear and log scale. It changes up your price, so it will force your line to get stretched. So just caution with that. The math is better and more accurate to do it that way, okay? So, but with that being said, um, there really isn't much of a stretch difference on this guy here and it hits target just dead on. So pretty beautiful. You can do the math. It puts you right about the same area, give or take 15 bucks. So let's move over here. Let's take a look at this triangle here as well. And again, we would be taking the difference between 12,000 uh, and 22 to 10,767. So let's just say 10,750 to 12,000 is going to be uh, $1,250. Yep. $1,250. So we're going to add $1,250 to $11,671. That's going to put us at $12,920. So $12,920 gets us. Look at this rate. Keep it going. Right about there. So just barely missed this wick, but hits this target here. Again, maybe if I just pull just slightly difference, you can see a wick there and a slight wick there, right? Just pulling it literally dollars difference would literally nail this target perfect straight on. So the best way to do this would be by t hovering over the candle and you can actually hover over the candle and off in the top left up here, you see the green and the red. When you hover over a candle, it'll tell you the open the high, the low, and the close. So by using that, you can get the exact number in order to really fine tune these targets as well. I've got some fun patterns here moving forward. You guys should stay tuned because this is a pretty good one that's gonna help call the bottom and whether or not we've hit the bottom, okay? So with that being said, let's zoom out here and let's take a look at a bull flag one here real quick. And what I'm looking at, see, notice how we create like a little channel here. It's not a triangle, but a channel. Arguably, it's small, yes. These are bull flags though. Each one of these are basically bull flags and uh, you can match these all the way going down. And for bull flags, all you're doing is you're taking the length of the flag pole. So the difference between 9428 and 7503 and you're basically pairing it up to the low of the flag. So take the difference between 9428, 7503 and add it to the low of the lowest point in the flag. So that would basically be duplicating this flag pole and then moving it up. But again, be careful if you're on log or linear, it will drastically, it could drastically change it up depending on how wide of a range you're basically measuring. So with that being said, this gets us literally right in the middle of this accumulation zone for a target, like absolutely beautiful. All right. So every single one of these patterns that we've looked at so far have hit their targets beautifully. So that begs me the question, let's challenge a big old potential head and shoulders here in the yellow, a little ridiculous, possibly drawn wrong, possibly, but let's just see what the uh, equation says for this and given the points and the way that I've drawn it. Now, the, the way I focused on drawing this was here was really making sure that I actually touched the neckline with our points. So I've got one here, here, and then things get messy over here. You can obviously see that. So by making sure that this point and this point touched together to give me the base of the neckline of the head. 
And that's where I'm taking this line out, protruding here and protruding here. I've got one more pattern to show you right after this, but take a look at this equation here is the breakout point minus the difference between the head high and the neckline. Again, taking a vertical line, okay? Vertical line, we're not taking a angled line at all, vertical line. So this difference subtracted from here puts us at 46.92. Now we haven't hit that yet. So it begs the question, are we at the bottom or is there more down to go? So 46.92, let's keep our eyes on that in the longer term and just see, do we actually hit that? Because that would be crazy accurate if it's the case. Okay, so moving back, I've got one more head and shoulders here. Just because we don't know if that one's completed, I wanted to find another one that said, hey, here's one, did it actually pan out? And this head and shoulders here, I take the head high, the neckline, and then I dragged the neckline over this way because we just accumulated here forever in a day. So really this neckline was not broken until all the way over here. I don't know if that invalidates the head and shoulders or if there's rules or guidelines reflected around that. However, in this case here, I still wanted to pull the math on it, use the equation, and just see how accurate it came out. So with that being the case here, we're going to take uh, the, I've got the, make this a sub minus. There we go. Okay, so we've got the breakout here minus the difference between 84.32 and 59.84. And it actually puts us at 36.98, which was the bottom right here. And then a nice good bounce reaction off of it. Yes, we hit a little bit lower, but that's close enough in my book uh, for some accumulating for the longer run. So with that being said, this is uh, the correct pattern breakout calculation sheet I wanted to share with you guys. I hope that you find it valuable. Uh, I wish I could give credit to whoever it came from. I honestly don't know. Uh, so with that being said, you know, take advantage of it. and. Uh, Try and uh, make some profits off of it if you're a you know pattern trader at all. Maybe this is the uh, the bread and butter for you. So with that being said, you guys, I'm going to leave it at that. And I wish you all the best. If you like the video, definitely make sure to hit those thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Leave me a comment if you agree with this. If you already do this, did you already know about these equations? Um, let me know in the comments down below, you guys. Much love. Hippo out.